Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, Sadie Katz. She's going to come on the show today, talk about whatever new movies um, she's got out and stuff, and we're just going to have a conversation piece today. I can't wait. Sadie is so funny and sweet and sexy. She's really awesome. I love Sadie. And uh, it's my special 420th episode, 420. Going to be pretty fucking sweet. And also, I'd like to say rest in peace to James Cotton, the legendary blues harmonica player. I just found out now that he passed away not too long ago, like, like within the last day or so. And a special rest in peace to John Carl Beekler, the legendary creature and makeup, makeup artist who worked on all the Charlie Band classics, Ghoulies, Crawl Space, Eliminators, Terror Vision, and of course he directed the classics Troll, Cellar Dweller, and Friday the 13th Part 7, The New Blood. And unfortunately I never got a chance to meet him or interview him. So rest in peace, John Carl Beekler. So yeah, here is my new interview with Sadie Katz. Hello. Hey, Tommy. This is Sadie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. Oh, it's okay. It happens all the time on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I went back to our emails and I was like, okay, we switched things and everything, but yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So much amazing stuff is happening in my life, I'll tell you. Oh, well, I want to hear about it. Oh, my God. So, uh, let's see. First, I lost 20 pounds. Uh-huh. That's yeah. great. Congrats. Yep. Been on a really good diet, and I've just been so lucky to lose 20 pounds. Um in May, I'll be filming the, um, my my own horror show. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, God, I'm just so looking forward to that. It's going to be great. I got some supporter friends finally who get who want to be involved in it, so that's going to be fun. And what, is it a, a podcast about horror? Oh no, no, no! It's it's going to be like you know me presenting a horror movie. Oh, I love that. That was great. Yeah, and we're going to do sketches and, and maybe some commercial parodies in between um, the show, and it's going to be very politically incorrect and hilarious. Uh, I can't wait to check it out. Do you have a name yet? Uh, we're going to call it Real Nightmares with two E's. Oh, perfect. I love it. It's great. Yeah. I just actually went into a documentary about Alfred Hitchcock last night. That was kind of cool. Oh, do you know what it's called? Um, it's Hitchcock and another French director. I'm not sure. Uh, something with an F. Um, I posted it on my Instagram last night, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. Thanks. Yeah. Do yeah, like it? Oh, that's awesome. Was it was it really good? Yeah, it was really interesting. You know. So yeah, it was good. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what it is called? Hitchcock Truffaut. Hitchcock Truffaut, okay. It's T R U F F A U T. Yeah. It was interesting. It was good. Mm hmm. Okay, I'll check that out. And also and and, and one more good thing. Um my friend bet me that I couldn't give up sex for Lent. <laughs> oh my god. That's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, it's been torturous, but I'm getting through it. Uh, oh, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So do you, are you recording this right now? Yeah. Okay. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's very exciting. That's all very cool. But, yeah, at the Arrow Theater, um, I, I, uh, had, I got to watch that. And I, you know, it's funny. Like, I know certain parts of Hitchcock's story, but I've never really, it's like, I, you know, there's holes, so that was kind of cool to watch. Mm hmm Yeah. I, I, I just got Hulu, and there was something about Alfred Hitchcock on there. Um, 
I'd have to check it out though, but I, but I could have swore like it came up in the search when I was searching last night. I was binge watching Married with Children last night. Oh my God. I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh, it's, my, it's one of my like top three favorite sitcoms of all time. Yeah, so are you a fan of Modern Family? I I like I like some episodes here and there. Yeah, it's funny that Al Bundy has made this career of playing sort of. He's almost like a, a you know he's a realistic, positive version in Modern Family, but it's pretty funny. Uh, there's some generation not only know him from that show and not married with children. Yeah. Not to make you feel old or anything, but yeah. Yeah, I was talking to somebody from Deadwood uh, last week, and she told me that uh, he was considered for the lead on Deadwood that Ian McShane plays, and, like, he did an audition, and then, like, uh, Chris Albrecht, the head of HBO, was like, I don't want Al Bundy in this show. <laughs> oh, my God. So crazy. The whole thing. I love it. I actually, I'm a fan of that show. I like it. I used to be really into This Is Us, but it was so sad. I was like, I just can't watch this every week. It's killing me. Yeah. But it definitely makes me cheer up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we just lost somebody very prevalent in the industry, John Carl Beekler. Oh, you know, I think I saw something about that. Um, what did he die of? Oh, okay. he, he died of cancer. He was probably in his early 60s or something. Oh, uh, uh, I think it's weird because of the, you know the internet. It seems it feels like someone's dying every week because our, our network's so much wider and you get you know news so quickly. Um, but it doesn't make it any easier. Yeah, and I was really sad because he was at Monster Palooza last year, and I couldn't go at last minute. And I wanted to meet him so badly because I just think that guy was a genius with all the creature and effects he made in all the Charlie Band movies. Yeah, um, you know who I, who I got to meet was Doug Jones from. Oh. He does the actual creatures in. Um, oh, what's the what's the. Oh, Life of Water. No, Water, what's, what's the movie that was nominated? Actually, it may have won. Do you know what I'm talking about? It it's, it sounds vaguely familiar. What John does, he actually does the character stuff, and he's a, he's a sweetheart. He He's best known for, I think, um, shoot, why can I not... Now I have to Google it. He does all the characters that have lots of face, makeup, and body stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm looking him up right now. He I, Yeah, yeah, I'm looking him up, too. Here he is. Um, the Shape of Water. And Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy. And yeah. Where he does, you know, obviously brings these creatures to life, even with all their makeup on. He's a nice guy. But he works a lot with special effects. And, yeah. And I actually have a movie coming out called Automation. And it's a robot movie, and we had a actor that was um, that was inside the robot outfit, which is kind of fun. Instead of just you know CGIing the whole thing, we actually had someone you know do it. It's like a it's a sci-fi slash thriller about um, a robot that falls in love with a coworker, and then of course things go awry. Mm-hmm. Actually, he's suffering from from PTSD, which is pretty interesting. And, and he worked on that movie you just did? Um, no, no, no. He, he did. I'm just saying, you know, as far as doing any costume work. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I also see he was in Hocus Pocus and Tank Girl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's had a good career. Wow, he was even yeah, in... Right? He even did an episode of In Living Color. <laughs> oh, how funny. Jeez. We got a lot of talent in that show. Oh, God, that show was hilarious. Yeah, I, I, I was like a, a teenager, and I just absolutely loved it. I became a, a Jim Carrey fan, you know, who guessed that he would be so, um, such a good, like, cheery actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was I was obsessed with him when he like exploded as a movie star. Oh really? Oh yeah. I mean, 
like I saw Your comedy. Yeah, I saw I, be, I believe I saw Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber like three times each in the theater. I was so obsessed. Oh, I know. That was my first soundtrack I ever bought. Like Dumb and Dumber. I loved it. Yeah, that's a good one. There's some good songs in that one. Yeah, I think it's. I, I feel like it's one of the best soundtracks, like Reality Bites, uh, Dumb and Dumber. Like, they, I think the 90s was kind of like the time of great, you know, movie soundtracks where you would like want to listen to the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I think it was actually the last good era of soundtracks, actually. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I don't even. I can't even think of one soundtrack from like the last, you know, nineteen years of, of the twenty first century. Oh God, I know if that's true. If you really think about it, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would. I would say there's not any that. Well, I guess a lot of people would say um, the one that just come, came out with Lady Gaga and uh, Matthew uh, McConaughey. Um, of course, A Star is Born. But I, I actually don't know the soundtrack, and I'm not a huge fan of it, that soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't think either and stuff. There were some good soundtracks in the 70s and the 80s, too, you know? Yeah. Definitely. Well, especially the 80s, you know, with all the John Hughes movies. And, yeah, it was, it was a good time for that kind of music, for sure. Mm-hmm. The 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 early Jerry Bruckheimer blockbusters. Oh yeah, that's true. Huh? I didn't even think about it. Beverly Hills Cop and Top Gun. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, those God, it's so sad. Oh. Like how much the industry has changed. I know. So where are you calling from? Where do you do your show out of? Redding, California. Oh great! So what's the weather like there? Um, the last couple of days, it's been pretty sunny, pretty warm. Uh, today, it's a little overcast. Right. Yeah, it's the same thing here then. Yeah, after all that rain, I think we got all excited to have the sun out again. You know, we're, we're spoiled in California. Yeah, we sure are. We sure are. And stuff. T- today, you are my 420th episode, 420. <laughs> oh my god, congratulations. You should have we should have made it a different time. I'm I'm still on the work schedule, but uh congratulations. I hope you celebrate it later. <laughs> I sure am. Um uh, are you a fan of marijuana? Um, I am I mean I'm not like a super fan where it, it doesn't play into my life in a crazy way, but um yes, yeah, I would say I the other day, I, I wasn't feeling well. I felt nauseous, and I remembered that it's like actually, you know, it's actually medicinal for that. So I was grateful to have it, um, you know. And I nothing like having a joint at the end of the day and chilling out. Oh yeah, this is nothing like that. It's it's so awesome and stuff. One of my best friends who turned me on to marijuana. He and I haven't been friends since last summer, unfortunately, and like we grew up together and stuff and like it just it it gets me really emotional when i think about anything related to 420 because uh because of all the good times we had and stuff and and this the times we had just experimenting with like crazy with 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 crazy ways of smoking it like there's there's this one year on his birthday about 10 years ago we were smoking out of this bong called aurora and oh my god i was not prepared for the hit of that and it just it just it just hit me like really really fast and made me lightheaded and I couldn't stop laughing for like an hour after that. <laughs> was that a good experience or a really bad one? It was a really good experience. However, <laughs> the high came to an end when he and I were walking down the street, and this guy that was dr- that was riding his bike like a maniac almost hit me, and I didn't even know it, but my friend saw it. And we, he had to, like, push me out of the way. Otherwise, I was going to get hit. And then that's when the high was over. <laughs> uh, then he wraps up pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad that you were okay. That's good. Yeah. That was pretty scary. And you have a nice story after it. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and then afterwards we're eating Twinkies. <laughs> Yeah, that's the curse of eating marijuana or um, yeah. smoking it. But you can also eat edibles, of course, but I don't do that because I think it tastes nasty. Yeah, I think it depends on what you have. That's, that is very true. I would agree with that. Yeah, one of my best... No. Uh, I'll go ahead. go ahead. One of my best friends who's a girlfriend, she gave me an edible cookie. It tasted really nasty, and it made me high super fast and then she regretted it afterwards because I was just super annoying to her. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, it, it affects everyone differently, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, I was just saying, so when you do your episodes, do you have to get the rights for the films or are they just, are they older films? Oh, um, well, for my horror show? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do the public domain ones, um, so that way I won't have to get the rights. And there's a lot of good public domain horror films to get. Um, my first one that I want to do for this pilot um, to see if it's going to to see if it's going to catch on is my favorite uh, public domain horror film, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, wonderful. Oh, is that considered a public domain, domain now? Wow, that's amazing. How long has it been out? Since 1960. And how long's that been now? I thought it used to be 100 years, no? Oh, no, no, no. It's been in the public domain since it came out. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. All the all the UHF stations in the Bay Area where I'm from used to play it at like 2 a.m. on the weekends when I was growing up. Oh, my God. How cool. I wonder why they did that. Oh, because they don't renew their copyright. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, you know, what happens, but that's what happens. And George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, his very first movie, that was, um, that's in the public domain. And I interviewed John Russo, the producer, and oh my God, he is so bitter that that movie is in the public domain because you know nobody gets paid a cent. And why did they do that? Because they just didn't fill out their paperwork, or because they wanted everyone to have access to it? Right, they didn't. They didn't have. Um, they didn't do their paperwork, and they just they weren't business savvy back then. You know, it, right. it it took them a while to get to be business savvy, and you know they just they just feel you know really bitter about it. Yeah, that's that's. I I can understand where they're coming from. Although those are movies that like everyone has seen a billion times, which is nice. You know, but yeah, you hope to get money from that, of course. Like, you know, we all build today. Mm hmm Yeah, but of course they got smart with the the subsequent movies that they did, and those are not in the public domain. But, right. but yeah, so it's going to be all public domain stuff. And my friend, he's a, a filmmaker. Um, he won he won a uh, an award at the um, short film festival in Sacramento last year, and I, it, the film impressed me that he made, and I wanted to uh, work with him. And like he used to do stand up comedy uh, with me, like in my early years and stuff. And he stopped doing it and just focused on film. And he's he's got a really good visual eye. So I said, "Come on, let's let's shoot this thing," you know. How great! Good for you. I think it's kind of like we're in a business where everyone has to you know, create their own destiny and take the bull by the horns for sure. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's some good goodness to that and some badness, but mostly it's good, you know? Right. Well, it, well, I, yeah. I think mostly having the opportunity to, to do your own work is great. Agreed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just so excited about this. And I'm just surprised at how enthusiastic my friends are about it, too. I just, I guess, you know, when you have really good friends and you have a goal, I guess, you know, after a while, you know, they'll be willing to help you once, you know, they see how serious you are about, about accomplishing it. Right. 
Yeah, I think so too. I think once um, once you actually accomplish it, yeah, it's a big deal. And then you get more support, it's easier to get support for sure. Mm-hmm. I would I would say that's pretty awesome and pretty true. Yes, absolutely. So I got this really fu- this really silly funny game that I play with guests where I I ask the guest four silly questions and after they answer it they ask me the same question back and I answer it. Okay. So it's four. I love it. Yeah, four silly questions. So, uh, okay. Sadie, are you ticklish? Um, no, I'm not. Are you ticklish? I am very ticklish. Are <laughs> you ticklish? Um, on my feet and my belly and my under my shoulder blades. Oh goodness, great! I love it. You're the first guest who's 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 ever said that they weren't ticklish, but everybody else has. Oh really? Oh, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm not really, but I don't enjoy being tickled. No. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> right. Um, is your belly button an innie or an Audi? It is an innie, and it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? I have a very deep innie. Oh, boy. As long as you don't get any cut in second, then you're fine. Uh, yeah. You- yeah, I, I I knew this one girl. She once told me that I could fit crystal meth in there. <laughs> oh my god, that's horrible! I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, what color are your toenails painted? You know what? I'm ashamed to say this right now. They're very chipped in the blue, um, but they will be in the next day or two, red and perfect. Wow. Yeah, mine are not painted. I didn't think so. <laughs> and this is my favorite one. Uh, is there any stinky smell that makes you gag? Hmm, I like smelly cheeses. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I would say, uh, I think some of those very bad, like garlic. It smells like garlic. It's not my favorite smell on somebody. Huh. Even though I love garlic. How about you? Uh, the first six months that I was out of the hospital from my car accident, I had really bad athlete's foot. Oh, no. And that, that was the only time in my life I ever had it. I was an athlete in high school, and I never had it. But that first six months I was out, I did, because they didn't change my socks the last month I was in there. Yeah, but I but I, I eventually, it eventually ended when I started just taking care of it every day, and it's it's been gone since it's been almost four years. Oh well, that's that's great. It's almost beach time, pool time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So tell so t- so tell me about these upcoming movies you got. Um. Let's see. I would say. I would say uh, currently look for automation that should be coming out very soon. Um, if you're a fan of LA Guns, I have a music video coming out soon. Do you remember LA, LA Guns? Yes, the the Ballad of Jane. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. Nice. Um, I'm going to be shooting a film called Secluded Lodge in June in um, in Italy. So that's sort of a revenge thriller, which is really exciting, and Silvio Nacci, so I have those coming out, and then I have a couple of surprises that I'm holding on to um, that I will be posting on my Twitter, which as you know is um, twitter.com, you know, at Sadie underscore cats, so people can find me there, and I'll give them updates, and also... Um, also on my Instagram, which is S E D I E K A T Z City Cat. Wow. So how did you how did you hook up with LA Guns? I mean, you know my friend Felissa Rose, who's from 
it's, you know, as you know, from Sleepaway Camp and about a hundred other films. Love Felicia. It was helping with the casting on that, so I was pretty excited that she included me as one of the witches, and um, that should be coming out later this month, so look for it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I, I love Felicia. She's but she's been trying to come on this podcast for a long time. She's flaked out on me a couple of times, but I hope before I go on my extended hiatus later in the year, she'll be able to do it. Um, yeah, well, she's, you know, she's crazy busy. I, I don't know anyone else who's as busy as her. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like, uh, you know, I, I feel like basically, uh, she would definitely do it. She's just way overwhelmed. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And she got hell. She wants to. She wants to make a movie with me. And I told her. I told her last time I saw her. I, I pitched to her this uh, the script I wrote and stuff. And she thought it was brilliant. And I hope I, I. I hope we get to do it and stuff. I'm actually coming out to L.A. for a week next month. Um, for Monster Palooza, and I'm going to be meeting up with some friends who are producers and stuff, and we might be able to make it happen. Oh, well, I will keep my fingers crossed for you. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah. I got three scripts I want to make. At the, the the first one, the one that the, the one that I pitched to Felissa, that's the one that I like. I want like to be like my introduction into the industry. I think it's going to be pretty groundbreaking. Uh, it's a it's a it's a slasher movie. Uh, it's a homage to like supernatural slasher movies from the '80s, like Nightmare on Elm Street and Phantasm. It's about um, a lesbian Catholic schoolgirl who moves into an apartment complex that's being haunted by her imaginary friend from childhood, who used to be a security guard at that complex when he was alive, and he died like a week before. Um, or a week before he became her imaginary friend. That's amazing. I love it. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my God, I just got all these great ideas and stuff. Like, everything everything that is about me as a horror fan, it's in this script. Like, I pay homage to so much in it. Right. And I've written parts for, like, Every everybody that I know in the industry that I would love to be in it and stuff. It's it's pretty amazing. And I also wrote a horror anthology script that I, I want that to be like the Pulp Fiction of horror. I want to like put everybody in that. I want it to be like um, like Death House. Oh, I love that. That's a great idea. Yeah. And then I wrote a, um, a homage to uh, sci-fi action action movies from the eighties. And that one's pretty crazy too. And it's somewhat, oh. it's semi autobiographical. Oh, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. So yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been writing scripts since I was 12. Wow. That's good. What got you into writing? Well, um, my mom had a friend who was, who was a screenwriter. He wrote, um, the early drafts of 12 monkeys. And, um, I, and, and when I was like, I don't know, seven years old, we took my first trip to Hollywood and there was this horror memorabilia shop, um, that had the script for the wizard of laws. I picked it up and I read it and I was like, wow, so this is what a movie looks like on paper. Like I want to do that someday. And about five years later when I met her friend and I saw, uh, uh, one of his scripts, I was like, wow, I want to start writing scripts. So my mom bought me one of the last um, electric typewriters, digital typewriters, and I, I started writing them. And uh, you know what my first script was? <laughs> What's that? I wrote a porno version of Blade Runner. Oh, my God. Did you get it made? No, no, no. I was 12 years old. I... I was actually embarrassed uh, by, by it after a while. I threw it away, but I remember certain things about it and stuff. I called it Laid Runner. <laughs> oh my God, you're so funny. Yeah. You're so great. Well, I am, I'm grateful to speak with you, and I can't wait to uh, see what you do with your, what is it called? It's Real Nightmares? 
real nightmares. I will look for that. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. Yes, and the um, and the, that music video, L.A. Guns. Oh my God, I'm I'm so happy for you. I I can't wait to see that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um. So, will you please keep in touch and please help anybody else uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'd love to keep them posted on projects I have. Oh, of course, of course. And thank you for following me again. That's pretty awesome. No, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, you have yourself a great day, Sadie. You too. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Sadie Katz. Ain't she a sweetheart? Thank you so much, Sadie. You're really awesome. You're a lot of fun. Just a real free spirit down to earth. And I'm so fucking glad you're going to be in the L.A. Guns video. Oh, my God. Just anything related to hair metal, I love. So check out Sadie Katz in the new L.A. Guns video. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.